Told you. It's called dressing for the swim. No problem. So the reason why we're out here today is to go over one very important thing, and that is cold water paddling gear. It's the perfect day to demonstrate this, and I'll tell you why. It's about 10 degrees Celsius. It's actually beautiful. You can see I'm wearing shorts. What you don't realize is that although you're dressed appropriately for the outside weather, you may not be dressed appropriately for the water temperature. And this time of year, it's very important because you have warm temperature outside and you have spring melt or snow melt in the rivers. You have to ask yourself two important questions. One, if I sustain a wet exit out of my watercraft, meaning you tip your canoe or kayak, will you be able to survive a long period of time in the water? The second question you have to ask is, if you do tip, are you in a scenario in which getting warm is not likely? So today, I'm gonna to teach you how to dress for the swim, meaning don't worry about what the temperature outside is, worry more so about the temperature of the water. Before I go into any of the specifics, I kind of have to give the disclaimer. Some of you are going to be watching this and probably disagreeing with some of the stuff that I tell you. And that's okay. If you're a highly experienced paddler and you've been exposed to some of the conditions that I'm going to show you here today and you've survived them, then please go ahead and continue what you're doing. This video is specifically targeting new paddlers who honestly want to know how to paddle in very cold water conditions in the early spring late fall and in my case even the winter and i'm actually going to pack raft the credit river today and this is what i'm actually going to wear so it's not like i'm just telling you a bunch of stuff it's really what i use so let's take a look at some of the gear i'm going to go over how to put it on i'm going to go over what to wear under it and then we're going to go out on the river so first and foremost i should tell you that i'm not going to go over any safety equipment today that's on you you've got to look that up if you don't know to wear a pfd and a helmet when you're in rapids or to bring a bale or a throw rope or a throw bag, um, that's gonna be a separate video. So I won't go into that type of stuff. What I will go into is for the headwear, a balaclava, neoprene preferably, is very good. Neoprene gloves, I usually use two millimeter. These are NRS. A dry suit, I know these can be a little bit expensive for you, but they are a life saver in very, very cold weather. And neoprene boots. Now these are not specifically ultralight in any way, but they do a very good job. You can actually wear them as shoes. Now that's the bare minimum that I wear in spring, fall, winter conditions where the water is extremely cold and I would not survive a sustained immersion. There's also a couple of bonus things that you can do. People often complain to me about their hands and feet getting very cold, myself included. You'll note that I said I have two millimeter neoprene gloves. A lot of people use five millimeter. I don't really like the feel of five millimeter, but I augment my two millimeter gloves with what's called pogies. But basically you wear your two millimeter neoprene gloves and then you put them inside this and the handle of the paddle goes through there. Furthermore, if your feet are very cold and the two millimeter neoprene booties are not enough, you can get neoprene socks to wear underneath them. These are very thick actually, I don't know what they are, but they're very warm. Just be sure to upsize your booties to fit the socks. My primary defense against freezing cold weather is a dry suit. A dry suit is very specific. It's different than a wetsuit. It does not, repeat, does not let water in. There's a gasket for the neck, which you trim to size. There's a gasket for the wrists. There's a gasket for the feet. You can actually wear clothes underneath your dry suit, and I'm gonna do that today. And this is kind of how I explain to people what to wear under their dry suit. Think of the dry suit as the outer layer of what you would usually wear outside. So if you are comfortable right now with what I have underneath here is a base layer long john and like some kind of sweatshirt sort of thing, a mid layer, I'm gonna remove the red jacket. I'll probably keep my shorts on to be honest, pull my socks off and put the dry suit on. It's always good to put the dry suit on in the seated position because you do have to remove your socks. 
And before standing up, you should put on your neoprene booties. Also, if you're an avid hiker like me, you probably got the purple toenail of death. It's been like that for like 10 years. I keep bruising it every time I hike. It's never easy getting the head through the hole. Zip up, cinch. Oh, almost fell over. And the neoprene gloves, I always put them on last. So I'm pretty much ready for cold water submersion now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get the pack raft going, we're gonna load up, take some shots in the river, show you guys how warm it is. To complete the mission, we put on the white water skirt. Your PFD. So one of the really good things about when you dress for the swim is that when you get hot, you can actually just go in the water and cool off. When you prepare for the worst, you're always in a better position. I made that up, but again, it makes sense. So let's go for a dip because I'm absolutely sweating. Woo. Told you. It's called dressing for the swim. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe, leave a thumbs up. And if you have some different techniques that you want to share with me, I'm always interested to learn new stuff. I'm Steve Evans and I'll see you on the trail. Doing some boat scouting, we might hit the hit the right side here. Looks like there's a little bit more water. Grind there, no big deal. The meat, baby. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. No, nope, there's a rock right there. Good wave section here. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this. <laughs> <laughs>